Sit down. Sit down. You know, you don't just wake up one day and want to be an alcoholic or a druggie. It's something that gradually happens when you go through trauma. Some people have the mentality, oh, it's very bad out there, don't go out there. We all have to do what we have to do in, in every sense of that word. Just be careful, bro. They also like around here at night, is it safe and stuff? Or? No. No? Don't no? Be here no. Young soldier of God, marching to the Lord till my knees can't bend. Yo, what's going on, family? It's your boy Dave here, and this is the TFS podcast, The Fresh Start. And um, today we're here. I'm out the back streets of K Road here. So this area here is known as um, Auckland's Red Light District. A lot of clubs, a lot of um, pubs, a lot of disco-y sort of gay bar type stuff. Um, so that's what this area has always been known for. Obviously things have changed a lot around here. Um, it's sort of cleaned up a little bit, but I'm about to meet up with my friend Tommy, who I've actually did an interview with in the past and who basically grew up here. So uh, Tommy worked these streets, um, came here as an 11 year old and um, basically became entrenched and found um, a family. The sort of people that came to this sort of area it was the people who are a bit lost, um, who had been sort of outcasted from society. A lot of them ended up sort of congregating here. It's gonna be an interesting uh, little walkthrough. So it's called Hood Diaries. So I'm going back to these, so I, I did one in Mangere, so if you want to check out the one I did in Mangere, um, I'll leave the link in the description. But yeah, so we're coming back to that. So at the moment, that's Cross Street that I just came out of, and um, we're just walking up to the top of K Road here. K Road. So um, like I said, we're just meeting up with my friend Tommy here. Tommy. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Good to Good see you. So this is Tommy here. So like I said, so Tommy here basically grew up here. Um, Tommy came here as an 11 year old, is it? Yeah, 11, 12. Yeah. 11, 12 years old, Tommy came to these um, streets here. Um, he actually ran away from uh, um, ran away from a boy's home, isn't it? Yeah, Sips care. I would say it was kind of intermixed. Went through heaps of different places and social after care, but ended up being on the streets of K Road. Yeah. yeah. So um, Tommy went through a lot in the boys' homes and even with the home life, you know, Tommy grew up. Um, around gangs, around violence, around domestic violence, um, which I'm assuming was a common denominator for a lot of people who found themselves on these streets here in K Road. What's it like, you know, looking around now, you yeah. know, seeing these streets, has it changed much? Yeah, it has, it's changed a lot. And I think the biggest thing right now is that there's a huge pandemic of um, drug abuse here in the street. And I think that what I want to make clear is that people don't just wake up one day and want to become a drug addict. And uh, it's a it's lifetime of abuse, uh, going through traumatizing situations to the reason why they've done and, and became what they've become. So we've got the Ambos pulling up, just walking in front of us. So I'm not sure if that's regular around here for them to sort of um, walk around. But yeah, like I said, you know, it's obviously changed a lot around here. Um, but yeah, there's obviously still a lot of homeless people. So what was it like for you as an 11 year old coming through here? Oh well, the age that you were. Yeah, yeah, it was, um, I guess, I was kind of like in awe because it's a huge city and all you see is all these lights. It was packed back in the day, it's really, really packed here. Um, all along here, just packed with people, packed with light. So what led you to sort of run away from the boys' home? It's just going back into what I had said, the traumas, um, you know, sexual abuse, uh, physical abuse, all types of abuse that happen in here. And so I didn't want to be around it, so I ended up coming out here. Yeah, and this is where it led me to this space. Yeah. Um, this is going out towards Mercury Lane. Um, corner of K Road and Ripley Lane basically if you go all the way straight down it goes around to where we all used to work so yeah I'll take you around there and have a little look cool yeah so this is Mercury Lane here um so this is where the a lot of the um so there would be two um type of um workers down here it would be the um, younger generation of transsexuals um and also there would be like one or two real girls that would be a lot of work right here yeah, but not many. So yeah. So 
So people had different, the workers had different sections here around K Road. Yeah, absolutely. There was um, there was two different spaces. We'll go up later and I'll show you across where the bus stop is. Um, a lot of the younger generation weren't allowed across there. That's where all of the old schoolers were. In. Um, what we call like the ones that paved the way for the community all kind of had their own area and it was very territorial um, a lot of the you know the younger ones couldn't cross over and if you did um, you'd know the repercussions of that yeah I think it was dangerous coming around here at any age not just at my age I think that you know because I was quite um, young uh, yeah I was just looked as a um, I guess pinpoint really eh? but like I said it's transitioned now from being out on the street to being online and that's why a lot of them are just working from homes um, is it safer no I, I, I still believe there are the same risks and the scary part is is that it's like here you don't know what you're walking into whether it being a client or being a worker you just don't know what the repercussions of that one choice you, you make this is this is what I remember is Coming down here on a car, parking up just over here on the, the right. We were, me and my friend, um, we were both workers and we were two guys in a car. I hopped out of the car to start working, and then these two queens came around the corner and just started, yeah, towing into me. Right here. Um, just down here, yeah. And just, yeah, it's helping me and telling me to give my bag and everything. And this is the first time I can honestly say that I'm. Um, yeah, I kind of just started fighting, fighting back. Mm. There was um, two incidents before that, that, you know, as an 11 year old got on 12, you don't really think about fighting. That's the last thing on your mind. So there are twice, two times that I got a hiding on the street. And I learned really quick after that, that that wasn't going to happen to me anymore. It just happens, you know, you either protect yourself or it would be a constant thing that would happen to you every single day. Well, so that's crazy. So Tommy came here as an 11 year old, 12 years old on these streets and getting jumped by two grown adults. So we're just at the bottom of Mercury Lane now. So Mercury in Canada. So right there is the NZ. Um, we'll probably go in there after, but the, that's the New Zealand um, Prostitute Collective NZ PC um, office there. Steady march. Steady march. Steady march. So this is the Simmons Street Cemetery. Simon Street. Simon Street. Simon Street Cemetery. So this is the Simon Street um, Cemetery. So I mean um What's the guy around here, bro? Well, it's changed heaps, but a lot of the homeless used to oh, well. kind of sleep around here. Um, and this is actually where one of, I guess, a, a friend of the street passed on. She got murdered up here. It's, um, it made the newspapers. You can actually look it up. Yeah, so very sad memories here. So was this like a hangout spot or? Actually, it was a hangout for mainly um, people used to sleep in here. It was like a place where a lot of the homeless would come up here and just kind of um, find rest. So yeah, so this is um, Simon Street here. So um, obviously this was a place known as uh, Tommy was saying, as a lot of homeless people used to hang out here. Um, and it's still the case now, there are still homeless people. Yeah. So yeah, there's obviously still a lot of homeless people around here. Um, as you can see, uh, I'm not sure if any of them will want to speak on camera, but um, I can ask. Um, but yeah, so this is the cemetery. I'm actually doing a vlog down here about the history of this K Road in the area. Ah. Yeah. Right. In no, no, hell no. Really? At the Don't old come up here. 24th of August. Uh, okay. Okay. Do you mind? Hey, can I, can put I, that yeah. away before I ring the cop. There oh, was yeah. a brother oh, put away before I ring the cop. My brother, 1955. Sit down. Yeah. They're not doing it. Yeah. Oh, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. So yeah. 
sit down. Oh, yeah, sorry about she's that. Right, she's yeah, she's she's not going to be on it or anything. It's it's all good. Like, no, no, no. It's it's fine. It's fine. Nah, that's my bad. That's my bad. Yeah, we're just we're just we're just we're just showing the history of the area. That's all. Yeah. See the see the graveyard there. See yeah. the graveyard across the other side. Yeah. <laughs> the council spent millions of dollars to shift everybody's graveyard. But did they shift it? Oh, thanks. That lies the question. Here's Pigeon Park. Here's where the homeless drink and have a good party. How, how much has the area changed for over the last couple of years? You know how people used to sleep underneath the bridge over there? So the, so un underneath there's a bridge over there. So that's yeah. the Simmons Street Bridge. Yeah. So that's Grafton, si Grafton. Simon, so, uh, Grafton, Grafton yeah. Bridge. So they used to sleep under there. They go and sleep underneath the bridge over there in the winter. So because I've interviewed a lot of um, victims of abuse in state care, I know that a lot of people in the boys' homes they ran away to here. So a lot of the a lot of the original gang members, the ones who are like the top ones now, a lot of them all slept around here. Yeah. Well, yeah. Through the and, winter and they sleep like, underneath the bridge. We ran away from our families to find us another family. And we found each other here. And with the gang members, they went on to find another family for themselves. You know, even you and even the people that I sleep outside, they all say hello. Yeah. Oh, so my story is I was actually deported from Australia. So I came back in 2019. So I was a gang. Oh, you were the 501. Yeah, well, I got all money. Most of them do. Yeah. But did you find out your pocket papa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I found so my So you happy? First. Yeah, yeah. No, well, I ended up finding God, but that's what happened for me. Did See, the Bible know? says in Matthew, so build your foundation on rock. <laughs> hey, my man. Ah. Yeah, brother. Yeah, it does say that. It does say that. It does. Yeah. Otherwise, you build your foundation on a sinking thing. Yeah, and you can't do that. It'll get washed away. Yes. Anyway, you're looking for your wife? <laughs> yeah, that's what brought me no, down no, here. No, no. So quietly, that's really what brought me down here. I'm looking for a wife. So. <laughs> No, cool, cool. Very tall lady, very strong lady. Anyway, there's one of the new drugs better than the new generation. Well, what's the luck around here now? <laughs> the new generation of oh. Something wrong with them. Wrong, you can go over that side. They smack the wrong crack, cuts, too much cuts. <laughs> the old generation is way better. They taught us way better. Yeah, so, so who was that, Tommy? It's just um, actually one of my auntie's friends from years ago. And so... I met that beautiful lady many, many years ago. Um, I just feel a lot of aroha. That's the only word that comes to mind is aroha because I guess I understand why they're here because not everyone knows this story. And um, just like I said in the beginning, you know, you don't just wake up one day and want to be an alcoholic or a druggie. It's something that gradually happens when you go through trauma. Make sure everyone gets to understand why, the why now, why people are out here. So this is like, this is the K Road, and so across the road um, is where Bar Court Legends used to be. It used to be like the number one happening spot here, Legends and Staircase across the road. Especially for the LGBT community, this was the main two spots that everyone used to go to. Yeah, so yeah, this is where it was when I was young. Um, went into the store, went to go and try some. Um, shoes on because I was infatuated with heels and all that stuff and it, I you know heard the gentleman actually describing me over the phone and um, yeah just by God's grace and discernment I'm so happy that today I'm still here to tell the story yeah but this is yeah this is a quite a quite a memory yeah so there yeah, Tommy came down here as an um, as a child and basically almost got sex trafficked so you know there's a lot coming to light with the whole sex trafficking thing and all of that yeah as we're walking around i'm starting to notice that people are talking obviously about me with the camera so there are a little bit more people walking around now wondering what the go is i'm telling you but you a pure young queen you couldn't pass this point so this is where all of the older older um old schoolers that would work up this way and so anything past here down was where all the younger generation had to work yeah. oh, okay so no one so if you were young you couldn't cross here 
you couldn't, you have to get in a taxi or else if you're the Queen's court you up there, you'll get a bash. Pretty wow. much. So yeah, it looks like it was very territorial. It's the passion for the Christ. Yes, I'm a limb of pride, sky dive. Treat it like it's roadkill, chuck that carcass to the side. So um, yeah, no, nah, definitely, you know, as we walk, my heart goes out to, you know, the history of this place. You know, um, this like, at the moment, this is like a trendy air, sort of area now. Obviously, there are still a lot of homeless and um, a lot of women you can see that are working the streets and stuff. A lot of rainbow stuff. So it is still very much, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what you call it, but yeah. So yeah, just as we were walking down there, I'm just noticing, you know, some of the street people are talking to each other and now there's a seen a, a guy coming and walking with them now so cool, this would work. so this is edinburgh street here yep edinburgh and gundry were known for the old school you know with the neckers mines he was very respected around here and also on, on k road um but yeah that one time that i did come down here mm -hmm. was the one time that god intervened so this is actually a street that actually um holds a lot of history for Tommy here in the sense that a significant um well if you check out his testimony that we did he shares quite a, a, a heart-wrenching um um event that happened down here there were a lot of um yeah very scary people that would be around here but um at this spot here is where you know I remember saying to the Lord if you're real you know do you love me show me well, so you had cut your hand, wasn't it? I'd cut my hand. Um, if you go back on the testimony, I'd cut my hand at my auntie's house trying to climb up the spouting. And what happened is that we came out here, my hand started getting affected, my arm started getting swollen. Um, long story short, there were a lot of clients that were trying to pick me up. And I was asking them if they could take me to the hospital, but not one of them wanted to. They wanted, they wanted to go out and still, you know, do a job with them. And I just wasn't in the capacity to do so. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, if you're real, you know, because I still remember what my mum said to me years ago. If you, if you need the Lord, call out to him. And this is where I called out to him right here. And I said, Lord, if you're real, do you love me? And if, if you do love me, I need your help now. And uh, when I said that, within two seconds down this way here, um, these Christians came up, this English, English couple, and they just said to me that Jesus loved me. And that I'll never ever forget that moment. Was it common to see Christians walk down here at night? No. That's, that's the, the most extraordinary part of it, is that you'd never see Christians come around here. So this is where a lot of the... <laughs> we used to call them the rugby players. <laughs> <laughs> the, the rugby players used to work down here. <laughs> no, they used to be like six feet tall, uh, and they were just yeah skyscrapers. A lot of the street workers, escorts, and all that sort of stuff. They would um, they would look after the rapists, the murderers, the gangsters. You know, out on the street. What I mean by that is that people that were real sexually perverse they would come out here and someone not everyone would do the same thing but some of them would take on that work so in a way they kind of actually um looked after the community in a way so basically what you're saying is that um a lot of sexually perverted extreme sexually perverted people would come down here and there would be um, workers that would basically take it upon themselves to work with these people to basically keep the community, the larger community safe. Um, I know of stories around here of um, like um, serial rapists and things like that um, who, who would um, go around here for years at a time abusing different workers and stuff. But, because these people didn't have criminal records, um, the police could never find them. So I would definitely advise a young girl not to come down here and do things like that. Because you just, and, and some of the worst offenders, like I said, would be people without criminal records. You know, I think quite a few things have made headlines where other girls have been abducted, abduction, um, and even from another worker, you know, that was just jealous of another worker, abducted them, um, taken them into um, 
like a valley and just leaving them in the middle of nowhere. Okay, this is going around towards like, Town Street. So around the corner here is where all the real, so these used to be all the real girls that work up here. Um, at the top of K Road going around the telecom building. So this is where the real girls were? Yep, yep. This is one of the streets of where the real girls were um, able to work. So yeah, no, I definitely will be doing more of these vlogs. Um, I was doing them before and I sort of had a break from them to, for about a year to be honest, but now it's a new year so we're sort of just getting back into it. The realities of New Zealand's underbelly, you know, because it's not pretty around here, I'll tell you that right now. Clean green New Zealand. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. I mean, what was the difference between, say, like places like King Cross and Sydney and like places like here? Um, I, I've got to say King's Cross is more sophisticated in terms of how they go about things. But here it's a little bit more ruthless. So, yes, they had um, overseas, they have guns and knives and all that sort of stuff. But here they would do it with their hands first, you know, and just have a full on brawl punch up. Uh, fist to fist. Only recently I've been hearing about guns, you know. Years ago you'd never hear of that sort of stuff in the early 90s. People would actually just have a full-on punch-up. So that would be the difference. Yeah, obviously living in Australia as well. So, you know, in Melbourne you've got um, St Kilda. In Sydney you've got um, King's Cross. So I guess the difference of here in New Zealand, like Tommy was saying, especially back in the days, it was a bit more ruthless a bit more from what i can see anyway from what i know the australian scene's more about money you know whereas here in new zealand it's sort of so small and so many competing factors that um there's a little bit more ruthlessness i guess a little bit more confrontations between different groups of people and stuff like that so yeah we're just crossing that bridge again back across the day street there we're just going to get on Bay Street Bay now. I'll take you through to where, um, where they had a lot of the male escorts or male street workers to a place called Beresford Street. So for those that don't know, so this is like the inner streets of um, the inner city of Auckland here. Emergency housing boy. So yeah, this is an emergency housing spot. So there's a, so yeah, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of emergency housing um, in and around here in the city so they're like hotels and stuff like that that have taken in people that are looking for homes and stuff so yeah I mean I, I've got boys well because the thing is over here you've got like hotels where the deportees from Australia come and stay at and you know the stories around here um, and I've heard of people jumping off buildings jumping off balconies uh, domestic violence stuff so, you know, you imagine it for, a, for a, a deportee coming back from Australia that doesn't have no support, doesn't have no loved ones coming and having to stay in, um, you know, some of these, some of these emergency housing spots. I mean, it's almost impossible to, to live a normal life for a deportee coming back here because you can't even sleep at night in some of these places because of all the noise and I mean it's a pretty dire situation for people that are coming back from Australia with no support and not only them just people here in New Zealand in general you mainly see this is Beresford and Day Street so all down here on the left all the way up to the top of the street they used to have a lot of the um, male prostitutes they used to work on the street a lot of memories here you know, I had a lot of friends um, that worked on the street that I used to look after and they'll look after me. And so, yeah, it's quite emotional actually, just standing there, just thinking about it. Because being here at that time, I, I made some really good friends here. Yeah. Yeah, so this is great. Look. combat flow. Holy Spirit, take the lead. I ain't going back, no. Fighting for my people, put my love on show. They can kill the body, but can never kill my soul. Nah. So this is in the, this right here is the heart of K Road, <laughs> right in the middle there. There used to be a lot of homeless, uh, I'm not sure if it's still the same now, but back in the days there was a lot of homeless people that used to congregate here as well. A lot of people on the streets. Yeah, so this is Myers Park here. So yeah, there are a few um, homeless people that still do hang around here. Um, this is, uh, this is a statue of Moses here. So 
So a lot of people don't realize, but that statue there is actually an exact duplicate of the one that was carved in the Vatican by Michelangelo. Interesting side note though that that Moses has two horns on the top of its head so I don't know if that's the Moses of the Bible but it's a Vatican version, a devil version, I don't know. Um, just over there is Queen Street so that's been the location of a couple shootings now. Um, there was a mass shooting that happened there. Yeah I mean how, how, how has it been for you you know coming down memory lane and you know seeing how far you've come and it's quite emotional i guess because mm. you know uh, i guess like it says in the bible that god knows you know the finish line at the start when he brings people into places and situations and so he knew that on this day today we'd be doing this interview i can stand here now and not want to cry about anything i can stand today knowing that this is how far he's brought me so if anyone's looking for some sort of hope, you know, find it in God. It's, it's the only reason why I'm standing today. Amen, brother. Amen, brother Tommy. Man, my brother right here, my brother in Christ, you know. So, um, yeah, again, very privileged to be able to come around here with Tommy and um, just share a little tiny bit of um, how it is march. around here. Steady march. Steady march. Young soldier of God. So I thought I'd, I thought I'd wait a bit later in the day, and then I'd come down to the bottom here, and we'll just take a little walk up Queen Street as well, and just see what the haps is. But this is basic, basically like the central bus business district here in Auckland. So this is just, so Queen Street is just off of K Road. So um, we'll just be cruising around here, see if we can spot anyone. So yeah, you got a prey station here. So we're just cruising through now. We've got more people worshipping here. This is some of the boys here, actually. Uh, so we mainly uh, come out here to um, evangelise. Yeah, witness to people, pray for people. This is how we did? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah, so now I love what these guys are doing yeah. out here. I mean, bro, like, what, what do you think the situation is around um, in Auckland at the moment from your perspective of being out here? What would you say the reality for a lot of people out here is? You know, some people have the mentality, oh, it's very bad out there, don't go out there. No, man, it's, you know, you just got to uh, have the love of God. Yeah. You know, the perfect love of God drives out yeah so that was the brothers there um yeah they do a lot of work out here with um you know feeding the homeless nah cause them be the ones that gather like wolves be the same ones that scatter like sheep firm in the word we do not retreat they all hate it cause it cuts like a razor whisper the name of the savior enemy flee disappear like vapor i told the devil i'm through ever since i took a little sip of that we're just continuing to walk um, back towards my park where I showed you guys before, so that's the park down there. We're just cruising through. Hey, Peewee! What are you doing, lad? Hey, this guy! I'm just shooting a fog G! Hey, you Bro, good to see you, lad. Hello. Eswa, brother. Will you be at church tomorrow? Yeah, going to church tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow, brother. Eshe, brother. Yeah, 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 I'll see you there, brother. Sweet, bro. Love you, bro. <laughs> Hard case. Yeah, that was one of the boys from um, from back in Australia. So good to see him doing well in life. So we're just cruising through Myers Park. But yeah. Hi, kia ora. Hey, what's it like around here at night? Is it safe and stuff? Or? No, no, no. Don't, no? Be here at night. don't be here at night. Bad idea. So there's that Moses statue again, the Moses that isn't Moses. But yeah, so there's quite a few people congregating here as well. I don't know if they're homeless though. I don't know if they're homeless. So yeah. Oh my god. Oh, so it does get pretty packed here at night. So we're just cruising through. So I'm assuming this is just where the young people come to at night. Oh, Can I ask a question? Is it, is it safe? I mean, we're kind of the problem. So <laughs> no, I don't say that. Here at night, no. No. People get killed here. Really? Yeah. There's, oh. there's been a couple of things. 
Oh really? really? Hey, can you can you say anything that you've seen heard happen um, around here? I mean, some girl got raped on the road. Oh really? Yo, and then there's cops all around, so you're not safe. Oh really? Oh, that sucks to hear. All right, well, have a safe night, you guys. I'm just going walking around. Hey. So, yeah, so this is K Road here. This is K Road at night. So. Yeah, like I said. Yes, hey, can I ask you, how long have you guys been hanging around here for? I was born and raised, baby. Born and raised. Hey, what, how's, how's it changed around here? Oh, it's changed Not a lot. Much. Uh, it's a bit gentrified now, but um, yeah. can okay. I do a backflip on your camera? For better or worse, it's up to everyone else. Just be careful. Just be careful, bro. Oh, bro. Yeah. Hey, what's your name, bro? Uh, Jim. 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 Good to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good to see you, boys. <laughs> Oh, oh, I've seen them around, around, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 you want to shout anyone out? No, no, no. I'll be doing magic tricks later. Eh? Hey? Magic oh, YouTube assist. Oh, true. Oh, nice. Nice. No, no, I'm all good, bro. I'm all good. Yeah. Anyone else come K-Row? There'll be magic on all night. Fuck magic. You know it. I have an absolute man. The cops. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this YouTube brother. I got. He's seen me. He knows my channel. No, he's he's famous because he's famous. All right, bro. I was telling you, you're doing Bro. Yeah, no, thanks, brother. You're doing your shit, bro. I mean, I used to come around to these clubs a lot um, back before. So, yeah. Yeah, so this is the end there. So, this is that bridge there. Instagram? Yeah, no, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, brother. And yeah. how long have you been coming around here for? My whole life, brother. I was on the street at 14, now I'm 38. Well, how, how you is, want it? Is, is the struggle more? Is the struggle more? Or, or? No, the struggle's not really a struggle because you, we've got to do what we have to anyway. Uh, I guess the government try to make it as hard as possible so they can get their stats up and all that sort of stuff, but not whinging about it because they help a lot as well. You know, they give them wins and stuff. Personally, I'm not a fan, but um, yeah, um, there's a lot of criminal aspects as well. To yeah. tell you the truth, yeah, like you know, we all have to do what we have to do in, in every sense of that word. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. As you can see. So it has gotten a lot safer around here. Um, but obviously there is still an aspect to K Road. Right, it went from one individual's doing what they have to do to two thousand people working together to live. So yeah. it's very safe now. Oh, oh, right. Right. Hey, wait, wait. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. In comparison, it's a lot safer now. Oh, so you're saying the work uh, people look after themselves. We all look more. after each other. Nice, nice. On a big aspect, it's oh, an cool, us man. thing now. It's us. That's also it's us now. You know what I mean? Nice, bro. Nice. Yeah. Bro, what was your name, brother? Jar Taylor. Bro, good to meet you, man. Well, Love it, bro. Safe, bro. Love it, bro. Be safe, bro. All right, be safe, boys. So yeah. Hey my man, good to see you brother. Blessings bro, blessings. Yeah. Oh so we got another ministry here that does stuff here too. Oh wow. Yeah. So how much would you say that the area's changed over the last couple of years? Oh well, I mean last time I the first time we went out was 92. Wow, so that's that's going back what 20, 30 years ago now. Yeah, that was um, when wow. I first came out. So like what? So like, would you say that the problem has increased or it's lowered or like the well, homeless? it's a different um, type of um, thing that you're dealing with now. In what sense would you say? Well, before you used to be dealing with street kids, all right? Yeah. You didn't have this thing with the homeless actually like you got now, it's just people can't afford, you know. The... Um, but yeah, this is this ministry here. So yeah, they um, they just uh, hand out food and things like this um, here in the city. So I mean, look, realistically, I would say that the majority of the ministries out here that actually do stuff with the homeless and they feed the homeless and that, I'd say that the large majority of them are actually Christian. So, and, and a lot of these people aren't even funded by the government, you know what I mean? Yeah, so we're coming to the end here now. So I'm back to the beginning here. So, um, yeah, that was the K Road vlog and just a bit around the city here. So yeah, if you enjoyed, uh, just give it a like and subscribe. God bless everyone. Much love. Stay tuned.